Some of the stories today do contain subject matter that some people may find disturbing, and as always, viewer discretion is advised. And if you have a story you would like to send my way, go to asthereavendreams.com and click the button to do so. And of course, thank you. So, I've been listening to scary story channels for ages, and I've always been a skeptical believer in all the stories. I feel like some of them are certainly fiction, but others sounded more true than some, but I've always looked at them as probably made up. That's actually changed recently for me because I had something happen to me that I would have listened to and immediately thought it was fiction. It's not super eventful, it's actually pretty straightforward, but it was seriously weird and is legitimately the stuff of nightmares. It was a regular Wednesday night to begin with. I had woken up somewhere around 3 to what I would say was the most annoying feeling in the back of my throat. Have you ever woken up in the middle of the night, your throat feeling like the Sahara, and you absolutely have to go downstairs and down half a gallon of water? Yeah, it was one of those nights. It was my own fault. I had eaten a whole bag of pretzels, and I knew that the amount of sodium I had consumed was probably close to fatal. I grumbled to myself, not wanting to leave the comfort of my bed, but after a few minutes of trying to ignore it and go back to sleep, I sighed and I relented. I stumbled my way down the stairs in the dark, nearly eating the hardwood floor in the hallway at the bottom. I made my way to the kitchen, grabbed a glass from the cabinet, and then walked over to the sink. Now, like a lot of kitchens, there's a big window over my sink that faces out into the backyard, and at night it's pretty much pitch black. There's a small light on the shed that's on the far left side, but that's about it. Normally I wouldn't even bother looking out back, or would and wouldn't think twice about seeing nothing this time, something actually did catch my eye. Right there, in the middle of my backyard, was a figure. Well, not a figure like something I couldn't make out, it was a person, and they were just standing there. Seeing someone in my yard was enough to startle me in and of itself, but the creepiest part was that this person was wearing a mask. This mask was terrifying. It had a weird twisted jaw with spiked teeth that were stretched out. The eyes were hollow and dark and really just was terrifying. Now, my brain made me stand there and just kind of stare at this person wearing a weird mask that was standing in my backyard for several moments. At first I thought I was hallucinating or dreaming, or that I was just seeing something else and only thinking it was a person in a mask. But... As I sipped my water, watching this person watching me, my mind finally clicked into drive, and I realized that I was staring at a person wearing a creepy mask standing in my backyard. Like, this was not a normal thing to see at 3 in the morning. I started freaking out at this point, and I dashed back up the stairs to put on my pants and grab my phone on the way down. I had 911 already dialed, and I ran back to my window, but was surprised to see that the person was gone. The backyard was back to being empty, and there was zero trace of this masked person. I had already dialed 911 at this point, and the operator was asking me where the emergency was, and I didn't want to just say, oh, never mind, I'm just crazy. So. I explained to her that I saw a person in a mask in my backyard, but that they seemed to have left? She was a bit confused, but I explained that I saw this person, and when I went to grab my phone, they had disappeared, and after explaining things like the idiot that I am, she reassured me that they would send a unit to drive around my neighborhood. After I got off the phone with her, I stayed downstairs and just kind of watched out the front window feeling paranoid and creeped out. After a while, the police had pulled up to my house and knocked on the door, and I opened it to speak with them. 
the officer asked me a few questions, mostly about what I saw. I described to him the guy with the mask, described what else they were wearing to the best of my abilities, and I could tell by the look on the officer's face that he was as confused as I was. He even said that it sounded really strange, and then asked if it was okay if they have a look around the property. I told them that I had no issues with that. After a few minutes, they had actually come back to the door, and the officer asked me if my gate had been broken. And I looked at him like, Huh? He motioned for me to come out, and sure enough, my gate was busted. The fence was wooden, and the gate was fairly large, and the latch had been completely pulled from the wood, like pried out with a crowbar or something. I told him that, no, it wasn't broken like that before, and he then told me to stay there while they checked the backyard out really quick just in case. They looked around for a few moments, and when he came back, he asked me if what he'd found was the mask that I had seen. It was. It was that same creepy-ass mask the person was wearing. After that, they seemed to take this a bit more seriously, and they asked if they could come in and if I could give them an official statement. That's pretty much where this ends, really. They took my statement, they gave me the report information for the insurance company, since the gate was destroyed, and they left, telling me to call them if I saw anything else. I have no idea if they ever found anything past this, as they have never contacted me about it. Now, I know that this sounds like some creepy event from some dumb B-rated horror movie, and I would have had that same thought had I read or heard this story. But I lived it. And even though nothing further has happened, what did happen was enough to be... terrifying. I was paranoid and watching the backyard the entire rest of that night. But when morning came around, I was feeling better. Now, when I go to bed, I double-check all the locks, and the gate that I had installed is reinforced way better than the old one. I have no idea how they pried that gate open, or why they did it, but they did. I also installed a floodlight that is motion-activated that shines into the backyard, just in case I wake up at 3 in the morning again and feel the need to look outside. First, thank you, Raven, for all of your content. I binge episodes while working my corporate job. Well, I would like to say thank you, Samantha, for sending me the story, and for the kind words. I've been enamored with the paranormal since a very young age. I wanted to be a paranormal investigator when I was a young child, but I went the corporate route instead. The story begins in 2008. My father's younger sister at the time... 39, passed away. Through the years of her young life, she had lived what they call fast and very hard. She was mixed up with drugs and alcohol, among other things. Because of the abuse to her body, she developed some illnesses. She knew that she would not live to be an old woman. She had two young daughters, who she asked my parents to take in if and when anything ever happened to her. This was a constant thought for her, and she would call my dad often to remind him about the girls. There had been a few scares where she would be put in the hospital, but she always made it out. That was until 2008, when she succumbed to her illnesses and addiction. I would get into the details of the death, but it's just an entire other story that could be told. Fast forward to a few months later... The girls lived with my family and things were starting to become normal. One day, my mom, my sister, four at the time, and I were watching TV. The way the living room was set up, the chair I was on was in front of the couch. The couch is where my mom and my sister were sitting. I was casually watching whatever program it was when I heard someone say my name. I replied to my mom with, what? She said that she didn't say anything. 
I was so confused because I was sure that I heard my name. I shrugged it off. A few minutes later, my sister says, Auntie says that she loves and misses her babies, and to tell them that she says hi. My mom and I were stunned. How could she possibly know any of that? How could she think of that on her own? She wasn't even in school yet at the time. And then it hit me. I had heard my name called first. Could it have been possible that my aunt was trying to reach me first, but when she couldn't get through to me, went to my younger sister? That is my belief. So after that, things were calm again. When one day I got a new digital camera, a friend decided to come over and we had some wine and decided to try out the camera. We posed in silly fashion with the wine bottle, wine glasses, and so on. We steadily added our photos to MySpace at the time. The next day, I discovered that the camera was faulty and didn't work correctly. So I returned it along with the memory card that held the photos. A few days later, while browsing MySpace and adoring the new photos that my friend uploaded of us, I noticed something. In one frame, you can see me and him in the picture, and the TV was off. The next frame it's us again, but the TV appears on. The next frame the TV is off again. In the image where the TV appeared on, I looked a little closer and in the TV there clear as day was the image of my late aunt. My aunt was in the TV. The TV was not on, but that one photo, she is there in it. We showed everyone we knew. It was super emotional, and everyone agreed that it was definitely her. It was the strangest thing. Even more odd, a few months after that, those photos were mysteriously deleted off of my friend's MySpace page before I could download them and I had returned the memory card that contained the original, so it's lost in cyberspace now. The strangest thing about that day that we didn't realize was that those photos were taken on what would have been my aunt's 40th birthday. For context, I am now a 45-year-old man living in a Baltimore suburb. I was 19 or 20 when this happened. I just got off work at Sears Auto Center. I was tired and covered in grease and all of that good stuff that comes from working on cars all day. As I left the parking lot, I noticed a big older model Ford Bronco tailgating me, and as I pulled up to the stoplight, I changed lanes to get this guy off my back end. I felt the eyes of these guys gazing at me. I'm not gonna lie, I was scared. I didn't want to look at them. And they started screaming at me and I still wouldn't look, but finally I was forced to look once they threw a beer bottle at my car. I looked over and the passenger yelled at me, You cut us off, and now we're gonna kill you, followed by a slur that I'm not going to repeat. I immediately said, Uh... No, dude, I didn't cut you off. Stop throwing stuff at my car. The light turned green, and I thought they were going to follow me for sure. I was right. Now, this was in 1998, way before cell phones, so I couldn't call for help. These guys were as close to me as possible without hitting my bumper. It was about 10 p.m. on a Tuesday night, so there was hardly any traffic on the road. I was terrified. I did, however, have my softball gear in the car, and I pulled my aluminum bat close to me in case I needed it. These guys seriously wanted to hurt me, and I didn't want them to follow me to my house, so I desperately tried to lose them. Their truck was huge, and I couldn't outrun them in my 89 Sundance. I wanted to drive to the police station hoping these guys would just figure out what I was doing and get lost quickly. However, I did have an ounce of weed on me, so I couldn't risk getting arrested again for weed. I decided the only thing I could do was call their bluff. If they wanted it, they were going to get it. I could hear them screaming and throwing stuff at my car for what seemed to be forever, but 
It was probably more like seven minutes. They kept calling me the slur. I guess that that was their go-to insult. Now, I'm not a huge guy, but I'm not scrawny either. I clutched my bat tight to my body as I drove, thinking about the best place to stop and just get this over with. I pulled into a small cemetery that backs to some woods. The small road does a loop around the cemetery, one way in and one way out. They kept screaming, We're gonna get you, slur, and laughing uncontrollably. However, the laughing stopped when I slowed down and came to a stop. Once I put my car in park, I heard the guy in the passenger seat say, What the hell? I knew it then that these were just scared little guys. I opened my car and jumped out aggressively. The driver then said, Oh, screw this. Since I was blocking the small single lane road, the only way out for them was to navigate in reverse in this really big truck. They had to reverse slowly so as to not hit anything. I walked them down as they reversed out. I said, Where are you guys going? I thought you were going to kill me. The passenger all of a sudden said with a shaky voice, We thought that you were someone else. Sorry. I then took my bat and smashed one of the headlights of the truck. They were both screaming in terror, and I'm not sad to say that it gave me a rush. They finally made it out, and it was over. The next day I had to work again. It was about 11 a.m., and I got the work order for a headlight repair on a Ford Bronco. Yep, it's a small world. <laughs> this event changed my life and how I live it. I've never backed down from anyone, and this moment molded me. Hi, Raven. My name is Brianna, and I happened to come across your channel one day, and now I'm hooked. You have some interesting stories, and I love your narration. And with that being said, I think it's time that I submitted a story to you. This should be under the paranormal category, as the story that I'm about to tell you happened under very weird circumstances. I am a mother of three, I have one boy, aged 13, and one girl aged nine. I did lose my twin daughter to SIDS, Sudden Infant Death Syndrome. My daughter was a fraternal twin, meaning not identical, but anyways, after I lost my daughter, strange things started to happen. First, it was just grief, and then I started to have dreams. These dreams were terrifying, to say the least. I remember the first time it happened, my little girl was nine months old, and her sister passed at three months old, so a couple of months after I had lost her, I would go to sleep and wake up in the middle of the night, and it always seemed to be 3 a.m. I couldn't move or breathe, but I could see and hear everything around me. It is the scariest thing I have ever been through, just not being able to breathe. I was stuck to my bed and I couldn't move a muscle to even try to get out of whatever thing or dream I was in. I started to fear sleep because, of course, I didn't want to go through that again. I did eventually sleep, and this one started off as a strange dream of me and my baby daughter whom I lost walking through the clouds. It was very calm and beautiful. I felt nothing but love and her energy, but then out of nowhere I felt a dark presence, and all of a sudden, I have both daughters and were running away from it. Then out of nowhere, I ran into a closet to hide my girls. I have no clue how I ended up there. I just remember in my dream that it was the only thing in the sky. This creature was evil. I could feel its intent, and it was not good. To give you an idea of what the creature looked like, it was just all black and menacing. It was this evil dark figure that was trying to take my babies. Once I entered the random closet, I couldn't breathe. I woke up, and I was under another sleep paralysis episode. 
Once I was able to move and breathe again, it felt like my chest was going to explode. That, to this day, scares the crap out of me, because it was about my baby that I loved and lost. I sometimes wonder if I'm going through her last moments on Earth before she passed away, but the entity came back one more time, and it was angry. Maybe because I got away from it with my girls, I don't know, but I do remember that it wanted my kids. I remember I had a few months where I thought I had finally gotten away from whatever it was that was haunting me at night. I remember falling asleep, and at 3am I was woken to a strange smell and noise that I can't even begin to describe because it was so high-pitched. I was alone in my bed and I couldn't move or breathe, but I could hear, see, and smell, and it was scary. I felt it on the right side of my bed, and it wasn't even three feet tall. I felt on the ground near me, and it had this evil hatred towards me. I was so afraid. I tried to breathe, but I couldn't, and I thought I was going to die. I started to pray, and after what felt like an eternity, I was able to move and breathe, and the figure was gone. I searched online, and the only possible thing that I can come up with is sleep paralysis. I've had maybe one or two more over the past nine years, but that figure is gone. I can now finally sleep good, but Raven, that is hands down the most terrifying paranormal event I have ever gone through. I feel like my baby is protecting me and her sister, and also her brother. And I believe that is why the entity has not come back since that faithful night. Sorry if this was long, but I thought it was well over the time that I told my story, and how I believe that there is something beyond death, and to know that I can feel her around me is just beautiful. I also have a glitch that I'll post soon, but I need to recover from reliving this event first. Let's just say that I believe as a child I was somehow glitched into another timeline, and leave it at that for now. And thank you, Raven. I love your channel, and congrats on the 20k. Well, thank you, Bree. I appreciate that. I took a spontaneous road trip to Arizona for a week several years ago with a homeless stranger. Let me preface this statement with, I only wanted to help him get something to eat, because he was looking through the trash outside the local library for food. I should have just given him his requested meal, large french fry and a large chocolate shake from McDonald's. I was originally going to get him a Subway, but he didn't want to eat that. <laughs> anyway... He was super scrawny and was wearing a Jamaican-looking beanie, but he was as white as could be. For some odd reason, I was inclined to see where he lived, because he made it sound like maybe he wasn't homeless. I drove him to where he laid his head, which was an empty dirt field next to some trailer homes with a fence. I don't know what happened, but... He kept telling me these stories about how something bad was going to happen in California. I really just thought that it sounded delusional, but I went along with him anyway. I ended up burning my battery out that night, but I think it was drained supernaturally, somehow. I say this because a giant chunk of dirt or rock flew out of nowhere and hit my car. Pat, which was his name asked if I had a dead brother, which I did. He told me that he was evil and that he had caused that. I was so confused. He then proceeded to tell me that my parents wanted to murder me and that they weren't my real parents. I don't know why, but I knew this wasn't the case, even though I hated my parents' craziness at times. I can't explain why, but he convinced me to leave to Arizona from California, which I did. I really don't know why. I told him I wanted to get some things in my check first, but he wouldn't let me. This guy seemed to 
possess some sort of mind control over me, as if my good judgement was overridden by paranoia, and I wasn't under the influence of anything. I never drove that long without stopping in my life. I didn't call my parents to tell them where I was leaving to, and they ended up putting out basically an APB on me. It was like I was an adult being kidnapped without force, but under duress due to mind control. In the week I was gone, I fasted the entire time, except for some fruits and a protein bar that I found in the trash, and I slept in my car. It was probably Tempa, Arizona, but for whatever reason, he was trying to get to Phoenix. There was a school there, a school of culinary arts, slash uh, Cordon Bleu. On the night that I was found, in my vehicle by the police, I was parked next to what appeared to be an abandoned train station, next to a railway. The scary part about this was that it was also next to a vehicle bridge, running almost parallel to the train tracks, upping the creepy factor. The kicker, and an ominous sign for alarm, was that there was actually a train running, and I remember that on one of the cars there was an Illuminati pyramid with an all-seeing eye graffitied. As soon as the police arrived, there was a female officer that spoke to me as the male arrested the man in the passenger side. I told her that I felt that I was under mind control and that I didn't know this guy, but he swore that I was his girlfriend. Apparently, he had a warrant for possession of meth. Once he was accosted, they told me to go to the Albertsons just down the street to throw away all of his nasty items in the dumpster. He had dirty blankets crammed in my trunk, as well as one of those New Testament Bibles. A part of me was still in shock over the whole situation, and nervous to think of what may have happened to me. I left out a major detail that creeped me out so much, and that's the fact that this guy kept talking to someone that I couldn't see, as if he were on an invisible Bluetooth. The weird thing is, the person he was talking to was named Heather, which is my name. He was actually yelling at her and demanding for help. It was very confusing, and I don't know if this guy was fully human, Maybe he was some kind of alien hybrid. I don't know. Either way, I was happy to be safe, and I never set foot in that library again. Since you and Spukaria have been telling me to submit these, I figured I would. I don't remember which direction these two go in, so I'm just going off which one I remember first. Story 1. So my grandma had a house filled with my grandpa's tennis cats. She slept in the basement bedroom with her cat Kiwi. Also, she made sure that no other cat would get in, so when I saw a cat's tail pass by the couch, I was shocked. Also, two things to remember. One, Grandma wasn't in the room, and two, the tail was an orange tail. Kiwi was a gray cat. At the time, the only orange cat was named after one of her kids. Also, I should mention that I tried to look for the cat after it passed the couch, and the cat wasn't there. When Grandma came into the room, I asked about the cat, the one named after her kid, which she then told me it had died. Story 2. So this one happened in my old apartment. I had just woken up and was seeing, or more accurately hearing, if my mom was up. But whilst I'm doing this, I see my mom run into my room, go over to my bedside table, and do something with my phone. I logically say hello, and as I say it, she slowly vanished. Story 3. So this was in the same bedroom as in Story 2. I was digging through my toy box and I found my old Hobbs, which is a stuffed tiger who looks like Hobbs from Calvin and Hobbs. He's deemed old due to being my first of those plushes, and when I pulled him out, I was scared. I have no clue why, but 
I knew that I didn't want it in my room. So he went into the dirty clothes. Into, not on top. When I was walking into my mom's room, I had this weird feeling. So I turned around to see him atop the clothes. Not where I had put him. It wasn't that crazy since I did find out my mom moved it, but that feeling was the scary part. That, my friends, was another collection of true, scary stories from you. All of these stories were submitted directly to me through my website at asthereavendreams.com. If you go there, there's a big button where you can send your story to me. I get mostly glitch stories, sometimes paranormal stories, but other times, I get fun stories like this that are different. Some of these are paranormal, of course, and some of them are just weird, but I get stories that fit together in a way that is cohesive. Though they are completely unrelated and on different subjects, it's cohesive because it's stories from you, the listener. I don't know if I describe that in a way that makes any sense whatsoever, but there you go. Hopefully you all enjoyed this collection of stories. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, as that helps tremendously. And if you're feeling ever so bold, you can go down below and leave me a comment letting me know your thoughts, how you're doing. Have you ever had anything like this happen to you? Let me know. I'd love to read your comments. And of course, if you want to submit it, I would love to narrate it on the channel. Yeah. There's also a Patreon, or memberships, where you get early access and extra stuff, and you can do a super thanks, which is a tip to the channel, which is never ever expected, and always appreciated. Just a little way to show a little extra support. Again, never expected. So, I do apologize, my voice sounds a little breathy today, a little airy, if you will. Um, don't know if that's a sinus thing, or allergies, or whatever, but there's a lot of air coming out of my lungs while I talk. Which, I, I guess that's normal, right? Breathing is normal. Anyways, um, I hope you're all having a beautiful week, my friends. I hope you're all ready for June, because tomorrow is June, and we're gonna have a good month, I promise. So, let's wrap this month up and move forward. We march forward, ever present towards the future? I don't know. I hope you all have a beautiful day, and please remember, you are loved, you are valid, you are important, you're the best you that you can be. Never let anyone tell you otherwise, and never forget it. And until I see you again, my friend, much love, Sleep well.